What's going on everybody? It's Sasha, your licensed real estate market expert here in Charlotte. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel where today we are going to talk again about Ballantine Reimagine. So I made a video last year that's listed right up here talking about when they first started introducing Ballantine Reimagine and kind of what the plans are. It's been almost a year since that last video and we have some amazing updates for you. We have new tenants as far as restaurants, we have new tenants as far as leasing buildings, and most of all, if you're anything like me, anytime I look at a rendering, whether it is a new development, whether it's a neighborhood, a master plan community, even a new construction home, sometimes when you're looking at the plan in itself or the rendering of it, it's kind of hard to imagine and we're all thinking in the back of our mind, is this really going to look like the rendering is showing us that it's going to look? And listen, so far, it's looking really good and I'm getting more and more excited. So if you haven't already done so, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And as always, if there's any questions I can ever answer for you about any suburbs, anything about real estate, zip codes, you can always feel free to call, text, or email me anytime. I'd love to help you with your search. And with that being said, we're gonna dive into it. We are going to touch on Ballantine Reimagined again. We're gonna talk about the bowl at Ballantine, the stream park, the Ballantine amp, the greenway, the residential space, and some of the road improvements that are gonna be happening. If you watched the last video I did, I mentioned that Ballantine is, in my opinion, it wasn't really a place to go to as far as a destination wise. You know, if I'm thinking about going to grab dinner, if I'm thinking about going to get drinks and things like that, I personally won't necessarily go out of my way to go to Ballantine. These renderings and this stuff that I'm showing you is completely changing my mind. They have a pickleball court in one of the parking decks at their garage that I'm assuming employees that are gonna be working at the Ballantine Corporate Park can use, which is insane. So the stream park is expected to be done in summer of 2023. The Greenway connection by the fall of 23. The Ballantine Amphitheater is gonna be open fall of 23. The bowl at Ballantine, which is going to be your retail space, your restaurants, and your office spaces is going to be early 2024, and the residential they're going to have upcoming in 2025. And the residential portion in 2025, that's when they're expected to start to break ground. It's going to take them a little while to build. So if you're someone interested in the residential spaces right now, it's going to take a little bit. But if you have any questions about the residential stuff, call, text, or email me anytime. I'd love to answer any questions for you. So the residential space, as far as the condos goes, they're looking to add an additional 700 units. Currently, if you're interested, you can take a look at the tower view in Ballantine, which is gonna be in the heart of everything else. With that being said, let's hop into all of these that I just discussed in a little bit more detail. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start with the bowl at Ballantine. So the bowl at Ballantine is a 90,000 square foot dining hall and retail district. So a couple of the new places that have signed some leases here at the Bowl at Ballantine is Harriet's Hamburgers opening in 24, Old Mecklenburg Brewery, which is one of our famous breweries and they have an amazing one open already. That is something insane. Oktoberfest, that is the place to go. You're gonna have Honeysuckle Gelato opening also in 2024. And this is going to be key. There's going to be so many families, so many kids in this area. You're going to need to have some ice cream. I'll need to hide that from my wife because she's going to want to go every weekend. You're going to have Rooster's Wood-Fired Grill. There's a dry bar that's going to be opening there. And that is just a couple of the dining amenities and options that are there. There's still lease spaces and things like that available, but they're already heading off to a good start. Not to mention the new AC Hotel just recently opened right in the center of Ballantine, which is right across from Ballantine Reimagine. And they have this really, really cool restaurant. I think it's called Hyra and they have a rooftop deck. They put like a steak on a skillet. They light the thing on fire. It looks like a very cool place. I still haven't been just cause it recently opened. So I feel like it's gonna be really crowded. So I'm waiting for it to maybe cool down a little bit before I head over there. And of course, other than the AC hotel, you are still going to have the Ballantine Luxury Hotel that is gonna be in the center of Ballantine Reimagined. And again, all of Ballantine Reimagined is being built 
where the golf course used to be for the Ballantyne Luxury Hotel. Next up, we have the Stream Park, which is a six acre park that is going to have a ton of stuff to do. You're gonna have a bunch of waterfalls. You're gonna have the amphitheater over there. There's gonna be open greenway spaces where you can set up and have a picnic, hang out, throw the football, the frisbee, do whatever you wanna do. It's also going to have some activity zones. I'm assuming it's gonna be something similar to like playgrounds and things like that as far as the kids goes. And not only that, they're going to be tying in this six acre park into the greenway. So in total, once they tie this six acre park into the greenway, there's gonna be roughly 20 miles of walkway, walking, jogging, biking, all of that stuff is going to be doable here. So this is gonna be a super active area. And as I mentioned, Ballantyne Corporate Park is there. So you have a ton of office spaces. So all of the people that are working at these office spaces on their lunch breaks are gonna be able to just take the elevator down and walk through all of Ballantyne Reimagined. They're gonna be able to walk through the coffee shops, the restaurants, and or just kinda of hang out, maybe get some work done outside. But all in all, this is just gonna be super vibrant and it's going to get Ballantyne connected a lot more together as a whole. Charlotte in itself tends to be pretty spaced out. So having something that brings these communities together, which 100% this is going to do, it's gonna make it so much nicer, so much easier for you to meet other people, for you to meet your neighbors outside of your own neighborhood. And it's just going to be a very vibrant area as you can see from some of these pictures. So within that six acres, you're gonna have a 3,500 person amphitheater where they're gonna be having concerts, events, maybe some yoga sessions and things like that. And actually, this is actually set to open this fall, fall of 2023, and they're actually having a concert by all time low, September 26th. So this amphitheater is going to be open in the fall of this year. So I could easily see them obviously throwing concerts, having some yoga classes or things like that, Saturday, Sunday mornings, maybe even throughout the week. And I can definitely see them doing something of a movie night. I still don't know how the amphitheater is gonna be laid out, but I'm assuming you're gonna have the theater, you're gonna have the stage, and there's gonna be a ton of green space out front where people can grab their blankets. There's gonna be vendors, there's gonna be food trucks. So I could definitely see them doing movie nights for the 4th of July, for Halloween and things like that. There's gonna be so much space, so many families that it's gonna feel like almost like a drive-in movie theater of some sorts. So this is something I'm imagining, it's not really in the works, but if you have a 3,500 person amphitheater, there's absolutely no reason why you can't put a projector up and start having movie nights and events like that at Ballantine Reimagined. Now the greenway that I mentioned, the six acre park along with the 20 miles of greenway is all gonna be connected together. So if you're living in Ballantine or outside of Ballantine, like me example, I'm living in Matthews and this greenway is going to connect and I, if I, there's not a chance I would do it because I don't do cardio, but if I wanted to, I can hop on the greenway and I can walk or ride a bike all the way to Ballantine, which there's no way I'd be able to do before unless I wanted to drive on the highway and risk my life, which I will not do. Uh, so that's gonna be super exciting for all the people that are super active and things like that. But along this greenway, it's gonna be the lower McAlpine Greenway. You're gonna have Brixham Park, and there's just gonna be a lot going on. You're gonna have Hawkins Pond. There's also something called a Fit Trail, which I think is honestly just gonna be that 20 mile trail, but I'm hoping every couple miles or so there might be a workout station or maybe an outdoor workout park. I think that would be a tremendous idea if they can squeeze that in on the massive project they already have. You're also gonna have the Dalton Green, which is another greenway. I believe this one is gonna be a little bit more catered to the people that are working at Ballantine Corporate so they can come down there for their breaks. But either way, there's gonna be no shortage of space for everything and anything to do. So as as you would imagine, a project this size is going to involve a lot of moving parts. So right now what they're doing is they're expanding a ton of roadways for people to get in and out of Ballantine Reimagined. For example, what I'm hearing right now, right after 485, they're gonna have a separate essentially entrance that's gonna take you directly to Ballantine Reimagined. So you're not gonna have to get off on the main road, which is Johnston Road. And if you've ever been to Ballantine, Johnston Road, main road, it turns into 521 all the way up to Indian Land, South Carolina. And this is a busy road. During high peak traffic hours, you can expect some delays, especially if there's an accident here. 
And because we're having all of this activity with this new development, we're gonna see more traffic. We're gonna see more people moving here. So they're trying to mitigate as much traffic as possible by building new roadways that are gonna take you directly to Valentine Reimagine if that's where you're gonna be going. And obviously you're gonna have your other exits on Valentine and Johnston Road. On another note, some other news, Novant Health is moving in the Ballantyne area. They're projected to open up here in the next couple of months right off of Johnston Road and Providence Road West. So if you're somebody in the heart of Ballantyne, there is urgent cares and things like that. You have specialists in the Ballantyne area, but this Novant Health is going to be the primary hospital for people that are going to be in the Ballantyne area. As far as recently goes, if you lived in Ballantyne, you're kind of sandwiched in between Pineville and Matthews. So you would either go to Novant Matthews to the hospital and or you would go to Pineville Atrium Health, which is roughly about a 10 to 15 minute drive. But now you're gonna have a major hospital, Novant Health, right in the heart of Ballantyne. So that is also gonna make a lot more growth happen. You're gonna have more people moving into the area due to the hospital. And all of those people are gonna be looking for homes in the area. So Ballantyne has been going through a boom and I think it's gonna boom even more as soon as Ballantyne Reimagine is getting closer and closer to getting fixed up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. As always, call, text, or email me anytime. All my contact information is linked down below and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, bye.